Okay, I think I've got this set up straight. Getting the audio right, getting the video right, getting the lighting right, getting the computer right. There's so much to it. And I've spent the last oh, three years on YouTube making videos using my iPhone and a MacBook Pro. Six months ago, I realized that my MacBook Pro just is getting too old to keep up with the live streams. And it was, it just was frustrating overall. And I, I decided I need to get a new computer. I spent a lot of time researching and I debated this topic to death. I actually got sick of thinking about it. And then the worst part was I'd have friends give me more suggestions, which made me have to reevaluate even more so. And I was just like, I'm sick of trying to make a decision. But at the same time, I wanted to make the right decision because it's a multi, well, thousands of dollars decision. Now, yes, could I get by with a $500 e-machine from Walmart? Maybe, probably not. Uh, could I have gotten a PC and saved money? Yes, but my entire environment at my home is Apple. And I really wanted to stay in that family because everything interconnects and communicates within itself. And I didn't want to have to deal with Windows because I can't stand it. I had Windows forever. So this little video today is really just to bring you up to date with what's happened in the last seven days. So in theory, you place an order from Apple, you expect it to be there within the day, but that's not really what happened. And I pretty much camped out by my front door waiting for my magic box to come from FedEx. And I found all kinds of ways to keep myself occupied. But in the end, I was very, very happy to hear a truck drive by that was actually outside for me. Yes! How are you doing today? Good, how are you? All right. I've been waiting days for Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Ah, ah, ah. I got it. You know the saying, what's in the box? Well, I'm going to tell you, but I have to at least explain this part of the video because it's going to be a little bit long because I wanted to savor every second of it. When you buy the most expensive computer you've ever bought in your life, <laughs> You don't just rip it open. You take your time and just breathe it in. Just feel the experience wash over you and appreciate it. It's that anticipation. I mean, think about it. I spent six months wondering what to buy, looking at Mac Mini, iPad Pro, MacBook Pro, iMac, Mac Pro. I pretty much debated everything that existed on the Apple website. And I was on that website looking at different specs so many times I was sure at some point a chat window was going to appear and say, Mark, would you please just make a decision already? So what I decided upon and what you're looking at here is a 27 inch iMac with a Retina 5K display. And the reason I spent so much money on such a nice computer is because I want this to last me for the next five years. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be my workhorse for of course all my business stuff, which a huge part of it is making videos for you and editing pictures. So I needed a really good processor that could hold up over time. I needed a really good processor that could handle live streams properly. And I'm really excited to see how much better things are going to be in the coming months as I get more and more familiar with this device. Now the, the guts of this computer that you're about to see, see how long it took me to unwrap it. I had no idea how it was even packaged, but I muddled my way through it live on camera and you will gradually see it here. But just, you know, for those of you guys that are into tech, it's got a 4.2 gigahertz quad core seventh generation i7. It can turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz. It's got 32 gigs of 2400 megahertz DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte SSD hard drive. It's got a Radeon Pro 580 with eight gigs of video memory. I added Final Cut Pro. Instead of using iMovie, I'm gonna start learning how to use Final Cut Pro and hopefully do a better job with my edits. I also picked up a new keyboard with a numeric keypad on the side and a brand new Magic Mouse. Now both the keyboard and the mouse no longer need batteries. You just run a lightning cable to both of those devices and you charge them up and they're recharged. So no more AA batteries for me. In comparison, what I've been using is a 13 inch MacBook Pro with a Vizio TV connected to it via HDMI for my secondary or main screen. This one here is gonna be the entire screen that I do all my work on. And it was a really hard pill to swallow. 
because this is, like I said, a pricey machine. But I already knew how much of a problem I had with the Vizio television monitor that I was using as a computer screen. The colors were way off. And half the time I would drag whatever project I was working on from that screen over onto the MacBook Pro just to verify the colors, then drag it back to the Vizio and continue editing. And that is a terrible process. So I had debated, you know, about getting a new monitor and I, you know, I had a feeling I would not. But my friend Kevin said, Mark, I'm going to convince you to get an iMac and get yourself a 5K monitor. Also, Kevin, I know you're listening. He told me to start filming in 4K. So that is going to happen this year as well. So as you watch new videos come out in the coming months, they're going to be in 4K instead of 1080p. When I unboxed this package, I felt like I was iJustine for just a heartbeat. Hello, Brandon! I have a new iMac! Wait, what was that? Anyway, here she is in all of her splendor, not plugged in yet. I still had to spend all my time migrating all the information over from the MacBook Pro to the iMac, which I did that night. This is the new screen, which is a 27 inch, and it's in front of the monitor I've been using, which is a 32 inch. Essentially, it seems to be about the same. <clears throat> and here's my little 13 inch MacBook Pro. <laughs> kind of awesome. And here are the keyboards, the original on the left, as well as the mouse. And then on the right is a newer keyboard with the extra buttons I'm still getting used to. And then the obligatory selfie, because I'm that happy about my brand new purchase. This is actually more exciting than the new car I got, because I use a computer all day long for work. So there you have it. That is my big news for 2019. Now, there's going to be a few things that I have to learn. Uh, one is going to be the audio volume of this recording. And we're going to have to see, once it's on YouTube, how it is for you guys, and if it needs to be louder. Uh, I'm, I always have to find that sweet spot, and then I have to learn it and kind of lock it in. My routine has always been to set my Vizio TV to volume 40, and if the and then whatever that sounded right to me ended up being perfect for YouTube. But now it's an entirely new computer. <laughs> so I, I don't know if it's going to be loud enough or if it's already too dim. So we're going to upload this one. I'm going to get your reaction. You're going to tell me how this looks and sounds and grow from that point forward. Uh, I do want to thank some more of my friends that have been trying to help me. Of course, my best friend Jesse has talked with me a lot about this topic. And Jerry reached out and spent a lot of time trying to convince me to get that iPad Pro, which, who knows, maybe someday for when I'm traveling. But for now, I can use the MacBook Pro when I travel. I'll still have my iPhone in my pocket to film with and to do impromptu live streams if I want to from a remote location. But when I'm here, uh, here you know, at my desk, I'll have a really nice computer. And you know, it is still sort of portable. It's all in one very sleek device. I can pick up the entire thing and put it in a different spot and plug it in the wall and we can do our live streams. So don't feel like you're gonna be painted into this corner for the rest of your life on my streams. I still wanna bounce around when it's appropriate, when it's useful. I'll just need to come up with some kind of a rolling cart to make that uh, be safe and uh, effective. I wanted to get all the data off the MacBook Pro and onto the iMac. I mean, just move my entire computer. And, you know, with a PC, you move some programs, you move some documents, you move some music, and you move some videos. Well, with Apple, you move everything, your entire environment. And it was 438 gigs that had to go from that device onto the uh, iMac. So I asked my friend, what am I supposed to do? And he told me, you're going to do all of this with Ethernet cables running to your router and from your router and let the router handle the entire transaction. So I said, great. And then he said, I need you to buy a special connector, which is a Thunderbolt connector that I plugged into the MacBook Pro, went to a Cat6 cable, then went to the router, then came back from the router and into the iMac. And we set up a migration tool on both devices. And it took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half at the most. I didn't time it and it moved four years of information onto my new computer. And when I started the computer, it knew me, it knew all my passwords, it knew, had all my music set up. I just had to log into iCloud. That was it. That was pretty amazing and, and awesome. And you know, you guys know, you see in my videos, a lot of times I'm wearing my Apple Watch, and I always have it on. Well, the beauty of it is I've got the computer set up to when I approach and hit the button on the keyboard, it unlocks and I don't have to enter in my password. 
And when he goes into screensaver mode, which, you know, is a protection, then he goes, it wants a password, but I'm near it with my watch and it just unlocks instantly. And I love that kind of tech. That's really cool. One piece of reef news I did want to share with you was something that happened to my frag tank. I reached into my tank late at night a few days ago, and I did a blog entry about this on my website. So I'm going to put the link to that in this video's description. But the tank was really cold. And I checked my apex and it was 73.3 degrees. I mean, that is cold for any kind of corals and fish. So I went back through the apex logs and discovered that my heater stopped doing its job back on December 26th. That was pretty much about three weeks ago. And this just quietly was happening and I was completely oblivious to it because when my hand's in the tank, it's during the daytime and I guess my tank ran a little bit warmer during the day. The last heater, actually, it wasn't, you know, it stopped working, but it still had lights on it. It was blinking like it was trying to heat the water, but it just after three years, it finally gave up and I had to replace it. I had a backup, I installed it, and within a matter of hours, the temperature rose on the tank to exactly to where it needed to be. So everything is great, and I am very glad that I caught that. So if you're running multiple systems, I would definitely recommend that you double check all your gear, make sure all your programming is set up correctly. One thing I also noticed was I didn't have the code in my Apex to warn me if the frag tank got too cold, so that's been updated. Finally, stick your hand in your tank late at night and just double check to make sure it's not too cold. So that's where I'm going to wrap up. Live streams, if you are not aware, happen on Saturdays at 2 o'clock Central Time, which is Texas time. So you can Google where you are in the world and say, what time is it in Texas? And you'll know when to tune in. And uh, there's going to be more videos rolling out. I've got Tammy's video that's almost done. And that is still going to be an iMovie production. <laughs> when it's a Final Cut production, I'll be sure to let you guys know. And uh, you'll just start seeing more things happening in the coming months. I'm excited to get caught up on things. I'm super happy to put this one behind me and not have to think about it anymore. It's been a really exciting month for me. And this is my birthday month, so it kind of makes sense that I go a little bit nutty. But now i got to settle down and just take care of business. So... Thank you very much for watching this video. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I hope that you will be a subscriber. I realize this didn't talk about reefs, but my entire channel goes through my computer. So I thought I've got to share this with you guys. And I hope that, I don't know, be happy for me. Don't be, don't give me all those thumbs down. <laughs> Actually, I don't care. You can do what you want to do. Uh, but thumbs up for me because I spent the money and that's, I'm super happy. And that's all that really matters in the end. So I can't back up far enough, but I just wanted to show you all my space.